It has been an entire year since I uploaded part one of the Sleeper PC build, which is way too long of a time span. But here we finally are with part two, so let's get building. So just as a quick recap, we are building a sleeper in this, uh, what is it, great quality case. This was originally a Windows 98 system, I believe. Uh, it has some sort of single core Pentium and a few megabytes of RAM. So very old and it is a mini ITX uh, form factor and everything in here seems to be standard. So this build should go pretty easily. So I'm going to quick do a rundown of all the components that are going in this sleeper. Uh, first of all, we have the ASRock H370M HDV motherboard. This is a mini ITX board, um, LGA1151 socket. And to pair with that, we have an Intel Core i5-9400F. And the reason I went with this CPU is because I found it for around 80 bucks on eBay, and it is a 6-core, six 6-thread six CPU, really solid performance. Um, and I feel like that's just some good bang for the buck. And I wanted to get a GPU that would pair well with it, so I got this Zotac GeForce GTX 1650 um, Overclocked Edition. Um, so I feel like this is a good uh, pairing with that CPU. Um, as far as RAM, we've got two sticks. Um, this is a 16 gig kit of 3000 megahertz RGB of G-Skill Trident Z. Uh, memory, and then we have a what is this? A 240 gig PNY SSD, along with a 500 gig uh, WD Black hard drive for all our games and software on the side. And I picked up some Noctua 80 millimeter fans to go in the case. Um, I believe this case supports two um, 80 millimeter fans, one in the front and one in the rear. So I got two of those, and then. We have a Vetru, I believe, yeah, Vetru, uh, some form of <laughs> CPU cooler that I found on eBay for pretty cheap. Uh, I believe this was $30, uh, but it had good reviews, and it's got copper heat pipes, and I figured it's a it's an uh, older gen i5, very power efficient, so this should have no problem cooling it. Um, I really like the uh, packing job. This is a brand new CPU cooler, and so this is factory right here um, quality and then uh, for the power supply I am using a Gamax 800 watt RGB power supply now I know that these things are ticking time bombs which is why I have it sitting on my shelf and haven't ever sold it in a PC because uh, I don't want my PCs to blow up but I'm gonna use it in this sleeper because RGB and this computer is not going to be running all the time and I also wanted to quickly mention, I'd like to be able to um, continue to use these stock uh, DVD drives. This one's by Polaroid, which is I think is really cool. Um, that's probably, honestly, pretty rare. I have no idea, but it seems like one of those items that would be pretty rare. Um, so I'd like to keep that one, and then the original uh, DVD drive as well, as well as the original... Uh, floppy disk drive. Um, I think it would just really complete the sleeper look having all these old items kind of on the front of the case. So the first thing I'm going to do of course is prepare the motherboard. We've got uh, our SATA cables, an IO shield, um, instruction manuals, driver CD, all that kind of stuff. And then here is the motherboard itself. So. Uh, the reason I went with this motherboard is because it's a, again it's a very low power and efficient uh, CPU, and it doesn't have any sort of overclocking or anything. So I did not need a you know beefy board or anything. So I picked this one up brand new for like 50 bucks, and of course it doesn't have a great power delivery or a VRM cooling, but it doesn't really need that because we're not going to be drawing much power from the CPU. So we're just going to go ahead and lift the arm up, take our CPU, line it up and drop it on in. 
give it a little wiggle and pop this guy back down. So next up I'm going to install the memory. Uh, this board only has two slots because it is mini ITX, so pretty easy memory installation here. So we've got a nice peel right here, which I'm always excited about. Mm, beautiful. That was a pretty nice one right there. Other than the feeling that you're constantly going to break it when you're screwing the cooler on, uh, not too bad. So, very good news, I was actually able to get the Thermaltake RGB uh, power supply to fit in here. Um, so this is awesome because it's much less of a fire hazard and uh, it's RGB, so very cool. The only problem with it is we've got a lot of cables coming off of it because it is a non-modular power supply and these cables are still like ketchup and mustard kind of cables, but at least they're covered up somewhat. Um, so I figured it... I'd rather cable manage a bunch of stuff rather than um, having the PC blow up. So, so I got both of the CD drives to uh, fit in here. Unfortunately, they're both IDE, so I wasn't. These aren't going to be functional. And the tolerances are incredibly tight. Uh, power supply cables are kind of running down. Um, the bottom CD drive is a little bit shorter, so there's like a little bit of a gap there. For the cables to run through but they're pretty squished pretty tightly so honestly it's kind of satisfying to have really tight tolerances like that though. In other bad news unfortunately the CPU cooler and the RAM are both uh, too tall for the floppy disk drive to go in um, and unfortunately this is also the hard drive mount so I'm not 100% sure yet what I want to do with the hard drive and SSD but I will figure that out along the way at some point. So I basically, uh, instead of using a full desktop size hard drive, I got a one terabyte laptop hard drive and a my 240 gig SSD and basically just screwed them in the back here, um, which isn't the most amazing thing, but it actually works pretty well and it's about the only spot in this case without just letting them lay around. Um, also the cable management isn't great, but it's honestly kind of the best I could do is just to bunch everything up and shove it in there. Um, it's not pretty, I don't really know what to do with all the cables because there's not really anywhere to go with them and they don't fit behind the motherboard of course, so not really sure what to do with those but um, we are pretty much done building the sleeper. So guys, here I'm running Fortnite at 1920 by 1080p, um, full epic settings, 
and we are getting we're averaging about 60 FPS uh, with max max FPS of about 165. Um, so it fluctuates a lot depending on where you are in the map, but we're averaging roughly 60 FPS, uh, full epic settings and everything. Um, it's running really good. We've got about 60 degrees Celsius on the GPU and about 50 degrees Celsius on the CPU. I also went ahead and ran a quick CPU-Z uh, benchmark for the CPU. We've got uh, 2554.5 on the multi-core and 461.5 on the single thread. Which, if we go to this benchmark graph for the i5-9400, um, that's roughly in line. Um, their score is two, 2,777 and 477 on single thread. So, it's honestly, the numbers are pretty close. I'm also running a Unigen benchmark on 1080p medium settings. We've got the GPU at 100% pegged right now. And it's running at about, it's averaging 57.4, max FPS is 65, and um, everything's looking good, the temps are good, it's right around 55 to 60 degrees Celsius, it pretty much peaks at 60 degrees Celsius, so honestly, all the performance is looking really good on this PC. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this sleeper PC build, honestly, this was a lot of fun, and I'd honestly like to do another one in the future sometime, maybe. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.